Uh, this morning, as we just begin to pray, lift up the service before God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we just bring this service before you, Lord, we glorify your name. Father, we have come this morning to learn of you. We have come to learn your word. We just said that you teach us, oh God. Hallelujah. Let's just begin to pray that we will have a, a mind and a heart that is ready to receive. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord, teach us your word, oh God. Hallelujah. Open our hearts, open our minds, oh God. That we might be able to receive your word of God with all gladness in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, that your word will fall on fertile ground this morning, oh God. In the name of Jesus. As your word is coming, let it come, oh God, with power, let it come with grace, oh God. Hallelujah. Let's lift up the servant of the Lord as he teaches this morning. Let's pray that he will speak as he were the oracle of the living God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord, we pray this morning, oh God. Empower your servant, oh God. Empower your servant, oh God. As he speaks, oh God, let your word come with power, oh God. Let it speak as if we're the oracle of the living God. Hallelujah. Let your word come with power, oh God. Let it emanate from the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Let it bring power, wisdom with it in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's bring those that are yet to come before God. Let us know that God will quicken them and bring them. Uh, even those who are contemplating right now, uh, God can say, bring them to come and hear his word. Yes, Lord. Father, we just pray, oh God, you quicken the steps of those who are on their way. Lord, we just pray, oh God, even those that are hesitant. Father, oh God, help them, oh God, in Jesus' name. Help them, oh God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we bless you. Glory and honor to your name, oh God. Father, as we want to learn your word this morning, teach us, oh God, teach your name and be praised. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, let's have our seat as we welcome Pastor William. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to be here again. Hallelujah. We have a very interesting uh, topic today. So I'm going to encourage us to just, you know, pay attention and then let's just try to focus more because what I'm talking about today is really, really uh, one of those things that people don't want to hear, but it's so important in the body of Christ. And uh, we're going to look at the, the demonic areas and all the oppressions of the demons and, and why uh, so many people are still influenced, so exposing the oppressions of the demonic in, the, in our world. As you all know, uh, this is a, a very big subject, so you can't teach it in one day, uh, because the demonic is so many aspects to the demonic activities around the world, in the churches, in homes and countries, in governments, and many, many aspects of life. But uh, I want to just narrow it a little bit, to just expose a little bit of you, so you can understand why demons do what I mean, how demons come into people, how they operate, how they manifest, and how we can be able to overcome them. Uh, the very first area I want us to realize is that uh, uh, demons come in through some second, certain things in people's lives. And then uh, sometimes in ministry or sometimes in life, we tend to forget quickly what the Bible says. Um, uh, you know, when people stand and they say, uh, we have come to this ceremony, and they are saying, oh, we give honor to the ancestors of all and all and all. Has anybody ever heard that yet? We give honor to those people. You know, you, you may not understand the depth of what is happening, but they are invoking some spiritual forces, you know, before they start their ceremony. Yeah? Why don't they pray to God, but they give homage to give you know, we, we acknowledge uh, the, the so, so and so of this land, so and so. When we were building this place, uh, we, we were called upon by the by the um, uh, the authorities, and they said we have to make sure that this land does not contain any of the bones or the things of the ancestral people. It's a deep thing, very very deep. People don't realize that, and you have to pay money for them to search. I, I don't know whether we paid or what happened, but I remember that they said, okay, we are cleared, it does not contain, you have to go to an elder, and the elder has to be sure that this area, that area, there's a special department responsible for that. So don't see that Australia is a carefree country that demons don't operate here. They operate here massively, you know, and people uh, uh, impose those things, and that is one of the reasons why I, no matter how much people criticize the former prime minister, I respect him for one thing. 
That man never, he will not go into any place that has got ancestral worship or demonic worship or Buddhist worship or Muslim. He wouldn't go. If you check all, he wouldn't go. And I respected him for that. Now, I mean, today you see all these uh, uh, leaders, all these so called mayors and Christians, whatever they call themselves, they go to the Buddhist temple, they go to that temple, they put all those things. Look, people of God, let's make reality. You know, some of these things carry some danger, and then when they go back home, they can't sleep at night, they have trouble here, they have trouble here. What happened to them? Some of them have pushed themselves into those things. And so, the invocation of the demonic is so real today that we believers, we've got to understand and know the action to take and to stand firm against the powers of darkness that are running our, our state, our country. I am very convinced that uh, in days like this, we got to be very careful because our family, our homes, our marriages, they are all in many, many ways in jeopardy. Our, our children, kids today are committing suicide like mass. Last year, 3,134 people committed suicide in Australia. Last year. You don't hear it in the media. You will not hear it. You know it that one, that lifeline. But just imagine, 3,000 people, maybe can feed this church maybe twice, I don't know, three times, I don't know how many, or maybe four, three times. There you go. Imagine those ones committed suicide. Not car accidents, not uh, sickness. Just kill themselves. Now, you have to ask yourself these questions. What is responsible for those things? Some of them hearing voices, some of them feel that they can't live anymore. And so the demonic is so active. And the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, I will be quoting a lot of scriptures. It says, The thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. The main purpose of the devil has always been to destroy. Always. Always. Satan has no other purpose but to destroy. His purpose is to destroy, destroy, destroy. Hallelujah. 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 So today, I want us to be very, very fervent in this area to be able to expose those demonic activities. But Jesus said, I have come to give life and life abundant. Why are young kids as early as, early as seven years old thinking of killing themselves? I have never seen a generation where children are so suicide conscious. Never. I, I, I mean, when I was growing up, children are seven years, eight years old. They play with their, you know, toys and they, you know, play with the pity. Today, any small thing, you see that they are killing themselves. The hospital bed, the hospital is challenged. They are cutting themselves. The activities of the demonic is intense. And if we're not careful, we in the church, we can take it for granted, but I want us to really look at it very carefully. That uh, I want to talk about how demons enter into people's lives and how demons manip manipulate. You know, in Mark chapter 5, let's go to Mark chapter 5 and let's read verse 8. Somebody can read to us verse 8, verse 11, and verse 13. How demons enter in. How do they come into people's lives? We want to expose the oppression of the demonic. Anybody? Um, yeah, um, Mark chapter 5, verse 8. Anybody read? 11 and 13. 11. Oh. Jesus 11. There there was thee nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And yeah. 13. Um, says, yeah. Did you, did you read verse 8? It says, he oh, said, oh, For he said unto him, Come yeah. out of the Come out of him, yeah. Now, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Okay, verse 11. Verse 11, yes. Uh, now, that's what I just said. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils beside him, saying, Send us into the swine, and we may enter into them. And 13. And four, forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 
and were choked in the sea. Wow. Demons can control humans. Demons can control human beings. Look at this man. The man was actually taken over by the demonic. They entered and they controlled him. You know, today when I look at our world and we go on television and see some nasty things that people are saying because of political correctness, we try to say, oh, you know what, this and that. But when you really sit there and analyze, you can see that some deep demonic activities are happening. They are controlling the thoughts, the mindset. Have you ever wondered, why is that man saying that on television? Why is that man doing that? So demons control. If you are not a wise person, if you are not a clever person, if you don't have your eyes spiritually alert, you would think it's just curse and that. Just last week, I think, or the other week, they, 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 I think it's the Moravian uh, City Council, I can't remember, they, they, that, that they had this drag queen, uh, they wanted to do some stories for the kids. And the very first thing I said was this, of all the people in Australia, of all the activities, why bring those people to talk to a six-year-old? See, to control, control the mindset, to bring their evil influence, to make sure they manifest their influence in our world. And that is why we must be very alert. You may look at it, oh, it doesn't really matter. It matters because the atmosphere you create is important. When those people are there, what are they going to do? They're not going to sing hallelujah to God. They're going to express their evil desires, their lustful desires, and their, uh, and their perversion that are going to go to the young kids who are vulnerable. Because kids are vulnerable. So when they are there, what are they going to do? No matter how they are reading the stories, but their presence there alone, they are dressing and their behavior contaminates the atmosphere. And it, we, we may be quiet and say, oh, let's not talk like that. But that's the truth. Because if we come to church, the presence of the Holy Spirit here makes the atmosphere different, enlightened, powerful. So the enemies also do that. When you find that there's a, 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 a demonic activity going on, the control is too much. The control is too much. We must be aware. We must be aware. And sometimes Christians are so naive. They think everything, no, everything is not against Allah, Salah. There are demonic powers and places that are in place today to destroy and deceive our children. This demon came in and Jesus said, come out of him. Come out of here. You've taken possession of that place for so long. And brother and sister, demons can control. They can control people's mind. They can control people's behavior, everything. And sometimes these things can be so intense that if you don't have a spiritual mind, you will not realize. Demons can, in fact, the control demons can have can be so intense that people can lose their focus and their attention because of control. Now, just think about it right now. When you come to church, you lift up your hands. You are controlled by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads you and says, go and bless that person. Go and pray. The Holy Spirit leads us. Think about it the other way. The, the, the demonic power also leads the other people to do the evil things. When will a, a, a 25 year old man rape a 6 year old girl? Think about it. Why will a 25 year old man go ahead and commit murder? It's because the demons are controlling him. It's not God controlling him. So the demonic are so active in our life. Now I realize that there are circumstances in life, some of them are, you know, the way we are brought up and all. But the effect of the demonic is so strong. And that is why I keep telling parents to be very aware of their families, very aware of their children, very aware. Where they go, who they, uh, it, uh, how do you call it, exchange with, who they mingle with. Because we don't want our families, our kids to be uh, exposed to these ideas. As a rule, I always tell families, when you are having your children in your home, what you provide for them is very important. If you are watching those nasty movies and those bad things, the kids are going to follow that. You don't want to bring an atmosphere in your home where there's confusion. And friends, I'm going to tell you right now, this is one thing I want to really do as, as emphasize on. When you see broken homes, when you see destruction in homes, when you see kids cut in homes, trace it back. There are some things, some atmosphere 
that has been created that has caused that. We're going to be aware today of the effect of the demonic in our country and our society. Demon can inflict mental disease, mental disease, cause people to be crazy. In Mark chapter 5, verse 4 and verse 5, it can cause people to have a mental, you know, when you see that, sometimes people get mental, people get so crazy, because sometimes their mind, their mind is taken over by the demonic, and you say, Pastor, how? How? When you give yourself to God, God will use you. When you give yourself to the service of God, God will use you. When you give yourself to the spiritual force that are demonic, they will use you as well. Now, I, I, I never forget um, an example that I had in my life. I think it was uh, 1984 or 83, I can't remember exactly. But I, 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 I was uh, uh, preaching in uh, Benghazi, Libya. And I remember I had gone to Libya to minister to the, the churches there. And the pastor said, Pastor, we only meet on the Friday because in those countries, you can only meet on the, on the Friday in the Muslim country. So that's the day that they, 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 they do the mosque. And I went to the church. It was a Catholic church. So they gave the Catholic church the authority to meet. So they gave me the pulpit to preach. And I never forget that I was preaching in this Catholic church. And it was like I was throwing uh, balls on the wall, passing by. And I said, what is this? I'm preaching, passing by. What is preaching, passing by? Then I stopped. I said, Lord, show me what's going on here. And the Lord said, this is not your house. This is not my house. He said, do you know how many demons worship here? And I remember very clearly, all of a sudden, I saw one, two, three, four pillars. And they, they were like this. That this is my house. And I saw the demons just like that. I stopped preaching. I said, let's go. I said, the pastor, I'm not preaching anymore. He looked at me and said, what do you mean? I said, this is not where we should be. He said, I said, if we stay here, we are all to Let's get out of here. Then we're we'll supposed to you right now. So the pastor said, where do we go? I said, let's go to your mission house. But we have 150 people here. I don't content. We will squeeze in the house. We went to that house, and I remember it was, we left there at about 11.30 or so, till about 4 a.m. in the morning, I was still praying for people. You can see massive deliverance. The healing power was flowing massively. God just moved so much. But we left that atmosphere. Then I went to God and said, God, why couldn't we do that? I could have cast out those demons. And God said, it will take you two days to begin to look at all those demons because it's their seeds. That is their power. That's where they have their meetings. Guys, these things, you know, it may look a little bit new to some of you, but these things, they have their meetings here. And then I came to realize later that that same Catholic Church is where most of the Buddhists, the Jews, the Jews, the Jews, the groups, too many groups, that they meet there. So that is why sometimes God has to tell you, get out of that place, get out of that atmosphere, because that atmosphere, you will not see any blessing. So, when we talk about the demonic, we are really speaking deeper. Because they can cause mental illness, mental disease, they can control human activity. And sometimes, they can even cause physical weakness. You know, how many times have we prayed for people? How many times have we been to people? And we command the demons to come out, and the person is okay as well. Now, demons are very active in the society. They can cause physical weakness. Physical weakness. And sometimes, as you know, strange as it may seem to you, they can cause people to have that physical weakness. You say, but how? I will tell you now how demons enter into people. But I want to go into a deeper one now. Demons can cause massive issues in the house of God. In the church, if you're not careful and you open the door, demons can cause church massive issues, can cause uh, confusion in churches, can cause loss of confusion, gossiping, undermining the leadership, authority twatting, and all of these things can come in. That is why the Bible says, and do what? Give no room. Give no place to who? 
and then bless him that hallelujah. He said, and give no place to demons. Don't give him any room. Don't give him any place. Don't allow him in any area. So sometimes I look at people who are gossiping. And they are yapping and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking things they don't know. When you are opening those doors, you gossip it. You are blasting the man of God, the minister. You know, you are causing confusion. Gossip is a very big area that you can open the door to the enemy to come into your life. Some things you don't know, some things you don't expect. Pray and read it there. Because the church is a center of a spiritual activity. And the first thing the devil wants to do is to shut down the mouth of the church. The very first thing is to make sure that it opens up and destroys and shuts down the mouth of the church. That is why we must not gossip and twat or this undermine the authority of the man of God. Because uh, when demons start to oppress in churches, you can see it yourself. You know, you can feel the atmosphere. You can feel the undermining. And uh, we got to also be aware that in churches today, a lot of people are not conscious of the activities of the demons. And because of that, prayer has become less. How many times have people sang and danced and done everything, but they don't pray? How many times have the church engaged in entertainment, but they don't pray? How many times have the church been so consumed in the affairs and the business and the physical things that are going around, but they don't pray? Because prayer is an a, is a, a, a contradicting to the enemy's power. So, let's be aware of this. So, in many churches today, there is an open door. So, we must not open the door to the enemy through gossip, through backbiting, backbiting, through backbiting, through things that are ungodly. Every child of God must have a godly atmosphere whereby they can be able to say no, no, no. Like I always say, when you backbite, when you gossip, and you're opening doors, your spirit becomes polluted. When your spirit is polluted, how can you worship God? That is why you go to Jesus and let your year be here and your day be there. Sometimes all you got to do is just shut people off. I don't want to hear. Don't pollute my spirit. Don't pollute my mind. People of God, demons can enter into people's lives. Let me recap again and cause control, cause better issues. Now, like I said before, it's a very big subject. I can't cover all in one day, but I want to bring so many thoughts in it. Demons can make people, and if you're not, if you give yourself to them, demons can really cause havoc in people's lives. I've been ministry deliverance now for the last uh, 40 something years or so, praying for people. And one thing that I've come to realize is that uh, as much as we can say it, nobody, demons can force their way into your life. You've got to allow them in. You have to, if you open the door, they will come in. If you open the door, they will come in. So, um, the Bible says, and give no place to the devil. When that door is opened, they have a way of coming in. That problem child, that troubled marriage, that issue that keep on arising. I understand that there are societal problems, financial problems, but some of them are blown out of proportion. There is no going back, no way out. How many times have you sat down and wondered, this couple that were doing so well, what happened? What happened? A man and his wife went to uh, uh, Thailand, and they, they, were, they were Baptist Christians, Baptist Christians, yeah, not to know where the Baptists don't get me wrong, but they were spiritually aware, and they went to this shop, and they bought a statue. This statue, they brought it to their house. And as they brought it to their house, they actually bought two. <coughs> they put one in their bedroom, and one in the um, sitting room. Week later, their business that was flourishing so well, their kids that were doing so well, everything going upside down. They didn't understand why. They were so disturbed. They looked around, they tried everything. They called the pastor of the church, and the pastor who obviously doesn't you know, have his prayers. I said, you know, oh, let's do some, do this, do this, but they did nothing well. And then they happened to be uh, 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 in a, they happened to be in a conference that somebody was teaching about the spiritual effect. 
And they were able to manage to get a man of God to come to their house to pray. And as the man of God came to their house to pray, listen to this now, they were in the city room praying. They had a massive noise in the back of the bedroom. So they all rushed to the bedroom and they found the statue had fallen and smashed. They were still surprised. And then they were looking at the statue, they went, they, they found another uh, noise in the city room. The, the other statue had fallen and smashed. God lifted their case in their family. Then years later, the man and the and the, they had an investigation and, and they discovered that that statue, the man that made the statue, actually was saying, as many people as are going to get this statue in their homes are going to become poor and beggars. They're never going to prosper. That was the incantation he made of the statue when he was making the statue. They discovered that, and it was for the person who was doing the statue, it wasn't anything special. But the spiritual connotation traveled with them all the way to their home. Sometimes some people buy trouble in their homes. Sometimes some people use their money to buy issues. And that is why sometimes I look at some Christians and I can see where they wear, what they behave, the things they put in their lives, and all and all. And you try to tell them. But they don't realize that another woman uh, bought a, 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 a headless lady, you know, there was a statue headless, and put it on her bedside. From that moment onward, she could not stop having a headache. Her headache increased, increased tremendously. Until the day God ministered, and when they took off that thing, the headache left. And she was asking, so you brought that thing into your home. What, what do you expect? Sometimes the demonic powers can be so subtle and light and calm. You know, somebody said to me, Pastor William, you know, I only thought that demons work in Africa. I laughed. He <laughs> said, oh, I didn't know that demons are in the Western world. Because you know, in the Western world, it's subtle, it's nice. There is no, uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, clay put on your neck and your head and you look like this. No, it's a subtle way. It's clean. It's the dress is nice suit. But the demons are active here. They are active in the Western world. They are active everywhere. We must be very aware of the demonic influence and also aware of the greatness of our God. Of how great our God is. That's what the minister was preaching on yesterday. Now friend, how do demons enter how do demons, this is the most important aspect I want to teach about because so many people don't understand that through their carelessness, through their behavior, through their, their, their lack of attention to details, they allow an open door and the open door allows the demons to enter. How do they enter a soul? How do they grab into your spirit? The Bible is very clear about this. The Bible says uh, in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, Verse 26, uh, it says, Be ye angry, but do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. But look what it says, verse 27. Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. In other words, you can give a room. If you read that whole scripture, it's talking about self-control, uh, holiness, and purity. You can give place to the devil. Don't give a place to the devil because all the devil wants is to be able to occupy and take over your life. Don't give room to the devil. Don't give a place to him. Because if you give him one inch, he will take it off. His desire, the demon's desire, is only to destroy and destroy and destroy. Do you know that certain sicknesses are uh, connected to demonic activities now? Families that worship other gods, uh, they pass on these things to other people, you know. So families that are worshiping generational gods and all these things. Uh, sometimes you don't know, realize that sometimes they worship the demons and those demonic powers are actively in their mouths. So certain sicknesses, certain disease can be attributed to these things. Pastor, what are you talking about? Not all diseases 
I have seen people that said their grandfather had that, the father has this, the grandfather, and it, it has passed to generations. We need to begin to understand and pray that God will open the eyes of his people. Amen. Um, God is powerful. God is mighty. He has given us authority and power. He has spoken powerfully and he said, is there anything too hard for me to do? He has said that at the name of Jesus, every name shall bow. He has said in his word, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is what? Above every other name. In other words, there is no sickness, there is no demon, there is no witchcraft, there is no curse that is above the name of God. But I'm going to explain a little bit to you why Christians get into these telling things. When you let your life and you are not pure in your heart, when you open a door, a door, when you open a door in your life and you do not understand purity, and you mingle and you allow things in your life to come in, like gossiping, like lying and fighting, like you know, living in that areas of your life, you're going to find, I will, I will talk about that later, you're going to find that, set that fight and open to a crack, a crack in the wall, and it come in. And most of the times, the believer is really struggling to understand why they are not going further. Because they've opened a door in their life, in their family's life. I have read the word of God for a long time, and I have come to one conclusion, one conclusion. This Bible is true. It's only if you take the Bible as it is, if you live a pure life, if you are holy and walking with God, no devil, no demon, no witchcraft can stand. Because in the midst of dirt, in the midst of impurity, in the midst of a lying spirit, in the midst of a, of a, a, sub, a, a perverted spirit, that is when the demons thrive. They thrive when there is no purity. They thrive when mom and dad are living life. They thrive when there is bad and dirty movies at home. They thrive when there is cursing and swearing. They thrive. That's the atmosphere. That's why I said this Bible is true. Because the Bible tells us to live a holy life, to live a pure life, to walk with God, to be holy, to be, to be dedicated. You don't hear that anymore today. Who wants to talk about holiness? To live a life of sanctification. The Bible tells us, put away, put away lying, put away clamor, put away gossiping, put away all the work of the flesh. But today, the work of the flesh has become so intense in the house of God that today so many people are actually walking in the flesh and they are not walking in the spirit. Today, there's more people walking in the flesh than walking in the spirit. There are more people who are attached. There are more people who are not anymore connected spiritually to the living God. The life of so many people today in the house of God is pathetic. They are so worldly. Their mindset, even the worldliness is in the church. It's becoming so intense that God is saying, you are bringing the world into the church. How can we then be able to stand firm and speak against the enemy? What we are actually bringing him in our homes. It will work. It will work. Your home, your environment should not be a place of swelling and cursing, of things that are evil. No. Your home should be a place where the Holy Spirit dwells. Your home should be a place where you come home. There's a family where the anointing of God as a high priest, as a priest of your home. As a minister of the gospel, as a child of God, you allow God to have his way in your home. But today, we watch dirty movies, we watch pornography movies, we watch sweaty languages, we watch all those nonsense things, we hear them on radio, then some Christians are dancing to chaka chaka music, they don't know what they're saying, some of this stupid music that are so evil, they will kill you, they will kill you, and then pa, 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 and they are dancing. It's telling you, they will kill you, you are dancing. But you don't know what you're saying. And so all of these things are invoking a lot of things. That is why I am very particular about bringing the spirituality into every Christian life. 
every Christian must be able to walk in the spirit. My friend, can I get a close My friend, the demonic powers are so real, they are so effective, they are so intense on destroying that you as a Christian, you must be very ready to take his time. You must be very ready yeah, to, to, to ask God to help you so you do not allow the work of the flesh to come in. Now, how do demons enter? I'm going to talk about that right now because I want, to, I want to expose one bit today. Demons can enter into people's lives through a lot of things. I'm going to... Um, thank you. Okay. You know, sometimes when the parents or the uh, father and the mother are involved in demonic or idol worship, they can be they can pass that to generations to their families. So sometimes it's through inheritance. So sometimes inheritance, inheritance. Now, this thing, this thing went here, but um, certain sickness, the family that worship other gods, they pass on these things to their families. Now, you, you're going to hear something today that will shock some of you. Thank you, brother. So, so families that, they, how do demons enter? How demons enter? Somebody said to me yesterday, you write like a doctor. I'm trying to make my life clearer. So, it's very hard. So, truth of inheritance. If your father and your mother and your people that you lived your life with were demon worshippers, were idol worshippers, there's a big probability that your children, that their children will become like that. They will hear that. And sometimes you see that every time. You see that uh, the father, you, you, you see the real life. You see the real life. His father was a drug addict. His son also is a drug addict. His father was a womanizer. He's also a womanizer. So sometimes you find that it passes through. That is why we are praying that God will break that spirit so that you don't inherit what your parents have been. I don't know how many of you here have got those things in your life, but it has to be broken in Jesus' name. And there's power to break it. Also, true inheritance, you pass on these things. Now, I want to bring one thing very important that I want everybody to please listen to. You know? Rejection, true rejection. Now, demons are very, very careful about rejection. Sometimes the demons can come in through rejection. You know when a woman is pregnant and they don't want the baby because oh, I wanted the, the boy, but the girl is coming. Yeah, I wanted the boy, but it's a girl. So because of that, oh, oh, oh I don't really want this baby, and this crunching and all and all. You know, all of it. You rejected the baby already in the womb. The baby is trying to leave, but you already rejected the baby. And that rejection can cause an open door for that baby. So the baby comes out and becomes oh, ah, you got help us. I am confused. I'm, I don't have a, a scriptural a base to prove this anyway, but I am confused sometimes that sometimes the Tussle and the confusion. Oh, I wanted the boy. What is the game? I wanted the game. It's the boy. And all the words you are speaking to that baby, sometimes they come back and they're born and the kids are confused. I don't know if I'm born again. That's my. I don't, I, I, I'm not saying I have a scriptural background for that. Sometimes I wonder is that why? Because today you look at the confusion. I know that society plays a role. You look at the confusion. I, I, don't, I want to be a boy, I want to be a girl. And they conject that confusion, confusion, confusion. It all starts from rejection. Now, I don't want to talk about rejection because it's a very big issue with Christians. If you're a father, if you're a mother, you must always remember this one I'm going to say today. Never, ever, ever be negative to your children. Don't reject them because those words have no power. Speak words of life and words of blessing. Your kids are so precious. 
whether the child was an unwanted pregnancy, whether it was unplanned, whether it was a mistake, I don't care. What I know is that every child is a blessing from God. Every child, because it's God that given life. So don't bring rejection to your family by saying words that, oh, I don't I, I, we didn't plan for you. It was because of this, it was because of that. And that rejection can come in deep. And it can be if I when we are praying for people, I can say it. Sometimes you are ministering. Do you know that there are sometimes when you minister to people, you can really see the demonic really attack and then the church. But they can't get rid of it because it has come to a long time of rejection. It's so intense upon them. You are casting at that devil. But because it is so pressed on, pressed on, it takes a long time to free them. And I keep saying this to people. Some people just think uh, deliverance is a quick fix. Pray for me again. Sometimes it can take a long time. Because if a person is moving into a new house, 10 years later, you are moving out of that house. I don't care how many trucks you get, you're going to take a long time to move everything out. Because that's what happens as well with deliverance. Sometimes your life, you are increasing it, you are bringing all this into your life. It's, it's heavy, 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 heavy. You take a long time. And that is why we go to get the word of God in our heart and get the prayer because that helps us a lot to be free. Amen. Okay, now I will talk. I will touch about that later on. So I'm not saying that that's my. Uh, 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 I don't have a biblical proof for that, but I have a something suspicion in my heart that this gender issue could be that because all the confusion. Is it because the mom said, "Oh, I wanted a boy, but he come out again"? Is that why? Demons can enter in also through marriages that are. Uh, 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 abusive and broken and all when the kids get attacked because of all of that. You know, sometimes we don't realize how uh, how blessed we are to be able to have a marriage by God. But broken marriage relationships, relationships that are toxic, yeah, toxic relationships can attract a lot of demonic activities. Because the kids feel that they don't belong. And when you begin to find out that the child is not accepted or giving the priority, it can come in. And then when they grow up in life, they get attacked by them because it's an open door that has come in. They can enter into all these things. And what happens then is uh, one of the worst things abuse, abusive relationship, abuse, and the kids become vulnerable. I feel a lot for the kids. Do you know how many times we pray for kids and you can really see the, the demonic power upon their lives? We're going to pray that God will help us to overcome this. Um, we all, I, I'm going to come up to the, to the, the heaven one later, but let me talk about demons transferring themselves through sexual intercourse. And this is a very common among underprivileged people and the people that have multi, multiple partners. It's a massive way sexual intercourse among people, you know, who, especially if you sleep around, you have that, that, the partner, that partner, that partner, you know, that's one of the easiest way demons get themselves into people's lives, you know. I have a minister that, as a friend, can bear with us on this. In some country we've been to, we've seen ladies and we pray and pray for them every year, same situation. And then we sit down and talk to them. How many partners they've had all the line, all the line. These are all things that we don't want to talk about, but are true. Because you know, everyone you go into, it's a spiritual thing. Spiritual thing. It goes into it and all and all. And before you know it, the person becomes so intoxicated and the demonic is exposing and grabbing, grabbing into them. The highest one that believes that demons really come into people is through practice of the occult. The occult, which he bought, uh, uh, the books and the DVDs and videos of uh, a horoscope and all these things that people read. Yeah. You know, people are so inquisitive. They look at all these uh, uh, movies, you know, movies and then, uh, 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 the, the, you know, all the, the, the horoscope and then you go to the soothsayer, you go to other people to read your palm, read my palm, read that. Day. All of these things are opening the door for the demonic to come in. I, I, I won't emphasize too much of that because I believe that God has got the power. Demons can come in through all these things, you know, pornography, music, and all. 
for us, we must keep the gates of our eyes pure and holy. We must keep it pure and holy. We must not allow any of these things. Now, that is why we must teach sexual purity to our family, our children. There is no, because you don't know where that man has come from. You don't know where that woman has come from. The man that you have gone to sleep with and sleep with and sleep with, you don't understand. Or the woman that you don't know where they come from. And because of that, all of them will carry something. And they carry it and they deposit it and they give it to you. And just by main association, sometimes can cause a lot of confusion in people's lives. We must be very aware. The Bible is clear. The Bible is true. Let us honor our relationship. Let us be pure. Let us be holy. Let us stand firm. Let us not allow all of these things to have an effect in our lives. Because God is still a God of order. He's a God of power. We must be very careful not to allow any of these things. Because when the demons see that your door is open, they will come in and they will bring many more and they will destroy you. If you are here at this moment and you have been rejected or you have a toxic relationship or you are sexual, sexual, sexual abuse or whatever is going on in your life, you go to pray and ask God to deliver you. Because all of these things the enemy will to destroy. The old court, like I said before, is a very, very bad area. People practicing black magic, white magic, talisman, all of this that they practice. The old court. It has become modern today. Modern. Because they have a modern way of old court, courtism. You know, people reading card, reading your palm, and all and all. You are opening doors to the spiritual, you know. The old court can be very, very dangerous. You know, don't, don't be too inquisitive. Let me see what my future says. Only God knows your future. No devil can be able to tell you about the future. You know, the old court and all of these things. You know, I, I, I remember praying for a lady in Italy and I <laughs> ministered to her. And, you know, I'm thinking, what, what, what is keeping this woman from getting delivered? And I began to open, open up my eyes and I saw that she was a card reader. She used to read cards and all. And then maybe we will speak to her life. She confessed and God delivered her. So, all of these things we're going to be very, very cautious about. Um, like I said before, demons do not have power to force their way into your life. If you open the door to them, then you, go to, you, you are putting yourself into danger. So keep the gates and the doors of your life pure. Keep them pure. You know, keep them pure. Let's look at today our families, our governments, society, churches, places of works, all the activities that are happening. All the suicide going on, all the evil spirit that are really intense on destroying our lives. Let's do today at the very core of society, at the very way things are run today. Let's do today at the gay movement, the less gay movement. Let's look at all of these things. Do you want to tell me that all these things are all natural things? That a woman that has got married for 50, 55 years, has five kids or four kids, and you know, all of a sudden they come and say, I'm, I'm a lesbian. No, something is wrong somewhere. And those that are wrong, some of the demonic powers have come in. And then after, after and then, or the man that has been married for 20 years, now say, Oh, no, 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 I want to marry a man. The demonic powers are so real. And that is why we must expose them. We must expose them. God is a good God. The devil is a bad devil. We must expose and say, these things are not from God. These things are demonic. These things are not what God wants us to be. We must not allow them in our homes. We must not allow them in our house. If you have a dirty movie, go to your movies. If people are sleeping together in the movie, kill them from your home. Your children are not right. You, you, you can't be letting your kids watch those nonsense. And bad languages in movies, clear them from your life. Get it out! Get it out! Get it out! Sometimes I admire the Christian movement, especially in America, that rise up against uh, this children movies uh, creator. I said, we're going to boycott them. I really like that. Because they're making a statement. Our kids need to have a pure mind. They, they are too young to expose them to those areas of life. Why? Why should we expose them to those areas of life? Let them grow. We send our kids to school to learn education. Not about sexuality. Look at how much is becoming bombarded every day. Sexuality, sexuality. It's become so much. You don't even know who is a man anymore. 
who is a trans, and the other day I was telling my wife, before there was LGBT, like LGBTQ people, how many plus, 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 I can't even, I don't even know how to pronounce anymore. They keep expanding it. Because the enemy has come in, and they are forcing it on us. They want us to accept it. It's demonic. It's the devil's plan to destroy our children. We must tell our kids, when God created man, and when God created us, it was a man and a woman. We must tell our children, so when they go to school, they can rebuff it. There is no way we can allow our kids to be confused in the mess that people are having. We must not allow that. We must take a stand. I know that many pastors and many churches are angry with what I'm saying, because they don't want to talk about, oh, like it even, but no, no. We have a responsibility as parents to be able to protect our children and tell our children, walk righteous. The demonic and the powers of darkness are very active. They are active in government, they are active in uh, para government, they are active in many organizations. And I'm, I'm, I'm uh, sorry to say that some of them are active in some churches as well. And pastors are blind and they are giving heed to demonic, drag queen and drag that and drag this. They are all becoming more prominent in our days. We're going to rise up. We're going to examine. We're going to determine and see that through this, now, people of God, I, I will open up a bigger subject, but let me continue to wrap this one up because the bigger subject I want to open up later on will show you why Christians need to be very cautious of their work with God. You see, when it comes to the demons entering your life, I want to put it in your mind, please. No demon, no devil can force his way. He can't come and say, now you, today, today, boom. No, they don't have the power. They won't don't have that power to come into you and force their way into your life. You have to open the door for them. Once you open the door, they come in and they manifest themselves. So Christians, be careful about your associations. Be careful about your relationship. Be careful how you speak. Be careful how you behave. Be careful how you react. Be careful how you live your life. Be careful how you honor God. Be careful how you speak and gossip. Be careful. Some issues do not need your comments. Some issues you hear, you pass by and pray. Some issues doesn't concern you. Because what I come to realize in my short years of living is that some people are so possessed and so demon activated that they want you to become like them. Cut them off. Separate yourself. When you see people who are lying and who are saying, oh no, that church, that church, that pastor, that pastor, shh, I wasn't there. I don't know what happened. None of my business. Because I don't want to open myself. I, 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 I was visiting a country and the pastor wanted to take me to the high life area. We drove and as I entered there, my spirit got so upset. So upset. I was so upset. I said, stop. He said, why pastor? I said, I'm going back. He said, why? I said, I don't want to come here. He said, why? I said, don't you feel it? This place is a polluted place. I don't want to. I feel that there's a lot of evil here. I just, let's go back. When we go back home, I was explaining to the pastor the importance of not entering the devil's den. Yeah, but I'm anointed. Yeah, you're anointed. Before you know it, they squash you and they kill you. No, I'm not going to let anybody destroy my spirit. I withdraw. I went back home and I prayed. And I felt the peace of God struck upon my heart. Because the enemy know we've come to town. He wanted to squash that anointing. Some of us, with our eyes open, with our two hands, we enter into it. it. And then we come back and say, oh, no, I, I feel so hard. Why do you feel so hard? Because you were in the midst of them. Uh, like, guys, let, let's be very careful. Sometimes you got to withdraw yourself. Sometimes you say, no, I'm not going there. Sometimes you got to say, no, 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 that's not my place. I'm not going Oh, let's go here. No, no, no. There's going to be drag queen. There's going to be this. There's going to be uh, uh, sweet peas and all. Ah, not for me. We've got to make a stand. And the, the reality is that we are not making a stand. Everything is going. Everything is okay for us. Everything. 
Give no place to the devil, the Bible says. Give no place to the devil. In our church, we're going to be very cautious not to allow all the work of the flesh, all the work of the flesh to become prominent. I'm not saying we are perfect. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that sometimes we don't have our own, you know, mistakes. But you put it down and you apologize and you repent and you start faith. And you declare you belong to the Almighty God. You declare that your mind, your soul, your spirit is renewed by God. You can't allow the flesh and the worldliness to be taken over your life. Friends, I, I, I better come to something that I think most of us take for granted. Demons work through the mind. The mind. The biggest battleground in your life is your mind. Biggest battleground is your mind. If you give your mind away, your mind to things of spiritual that are, that are not spiritual, you will be flooded. That are not spiritual. And sometimes I see people like that. The things your mind are occupied with on a day to day basis, what are they? What fills your mind? What fills your mind? What is it that is in your mind on a day to day basis? What are the things you think of? What are the things that grab hold of you? What are the things that you, you meditate upon? What are the things? That you cannot get, you talk and talk and talk and think of what are the things that every time your mind is occupied with. What are the things? Are they godly things? Or are they things that are not godly? Guard your mind, people of God. Guard your mind. Your mind is so, so vital. Your mind is so vital. You've got to be able. To stand firm and allow the Lord to walk and to be Lord of your mind. Because your mind, if you do not take care, once it's polluted, every area of your life gets that pollution. Today, we are living in a world where today you don't even need to be disguised. You can have a nice suit. And a nice attire, and you can be uh, possessed or demon inflicted. We as Christians, we must be aware of that. We as Christians, we must take over and stand firm and not allow the demonic operations to take over our lives. In our land, we see it every time. We see what they do. We see the people doing all the things, talking about the things. Because uh, they want to give homage to the ancestral spirits. But we must not allow that. The Bible says we must cast down every imagination that lifted up itself against the knowledge of Christ. We must put on the armor of God. We must be strong. We must be very, very dedicated. Let your mind be in you. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Let's turn to Galatians chapter 2. I want to read verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. The Bible says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The word of God is talking here to you and I and is saying, for a long time, because a man is a spirit being, you are a spirit being, yeah? Watch this, yeah? Man, man is a spirit being. So, man is a spirit being. 
The devil is a spirit. God is a spirit. So, devil and God. Man is a spirit being. So, the devil, if you yield yourself to the work of the flesh, the devil will take over. And what you do, which you manifest in your evil life. But if you yield yourself to God, God will take over and you manifest in the spiritual atmosphere. So what we say is that him whom you yield yourself to is who you're going to manifest. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. Mankind need to align themselves with God and allow God to take over their lives. Mankind need to have a relationship with God so much so that they are crucified with Christ. You have crucified your lust, your lust, your flesh, and your fleshly desires. Fleshly desires, they're all crucified. They are no longer active. Your desire is only to serve God. So the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the fleshly desires, all that come for the lust and the occupation of the flesh and all the evil, you have destroyed it. You have nailed it on the cross. I am crucified with Christ. But the life I now live, I live by faith of the Son of God. Because now I am connected to God. Because now God is my Father. Because now I am not anymore in the territory of the enemy. Some of us were born into homes. Into homes that uh, I don't worship. Some of us came from homes. Some of us came from backgrounds. That our parents were not godly. Let's be honest here. Yeah? Our homes and uh, our fathers and mothers worship by uh, idols. Some of them were Buddhists, some of them were animists, some of them were, uh, you know, some of the you know, cultures were bad. We all came from that. But it doesn't mean that the God we came from that we have to remain that. There is an opportunity for us to turn around. Do you know that the, the Christian life? Is the most beautiful life you can live if you truly live it for God. If you truly surrender, my problem is this: what I find, not many people are truly surrender to God. What I find is that the man is dragging with the devil, drag, drag, and here, drag, drag, and here. So it becomes a circle. Yeah, yeah, for God, yeah, for God, you go like that every day. Let me have a bit of that, have a bit of that. And all that knows is that you become unhappy. There's no joy. There's no peace. Because you are not enjoying, enjoying the best of God. The Bible says, surrender yourself to God. This is the devil and he will flee from you. The only way we can be able to have the enemy of us stand against him and declare as in the name of Jesus, you are not going to take over my life. Do you know that sometimes, yeah, look, I, I, want, I want to go a bit deeper, but I, do you know that sometimes mankind has polluted themselves so, to the extent that God is just there as a backup, as a backup, just in case, but their life they live has no connection with God. It's a pity. We can dance all we can in church, put on the smoke machine in church, but unless we are actually living our life in Christ, Christ in me, the hope of glory, we will still have all the attributes and all the possession and all the influence of the enemy. Because friends, you cannot serve God and the devil if you are still living in the flesh and working in the flesh and everything you do, your mouth, your spirit, Behavior, everything about you, see, worldly. When you go out of your house, you will express that. But if you are, if you have Christ in you, the hope of glory, what you will express is what God is about: the love of God, the power of God, the grace of God. And the enemy will be afraid of you. How many Christians are seen being perfected by the enemy? Because the enemy look at them and say, "You, you are nothing." You, you are nothing. You don't carry anything. You're just an ordinary person. 
And that is not how it should be. We should be able to wake up and look at that devil and look at all the things and not be led by the devil anymore. How can it? I never ever thought in my life I would speak this word and say, Christians don't be led by the devil. I never thought like that. I never. I thought all Christians should be led by God. All Christians should be led by God. Hallelujah. And that is why we must remember, we must remember that this morning, in our own time, in our own ways, let's make a declaration. Where do I belong? Whom do I stand for? <laughs> Whom do I stand for? Hallelujah. Whom do I stand for? Where do I belong? Who am I? Who am I? Okay. Let's make a declaration. Let's make that declaration. Let's make it clear every day of our life. Let's open up a bigger way. Where do I stand? Because friend, if you don't make that declaration now, then you're going to find that every day of your life, you will be troubled by the demonic. You will be troubled. You wake up because your family and your children, and you know, you, you don't want that life. You don't want that life. Hallelujah. 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 You know, thank you. So, we come to that area whereby, now look at you now, look at yourself. Imagine all that you go through. Imagine all the stress and all the strain and all the activity. Think about your daily activity. How many of them are godly? Think about how many activities you have done. Even this one that are godly. Did you get angry? Did you snap at somebody? Were you jealous? Were you angry? Were you what, what was your activity like? Who actually controls you? Who lives on the inside? Are you being pulled by the enemy? Are you being pulled by God? Who is pulling you? Who is pulling you? Is it God or the devil? Is it God or the demons? How do the demons have a chance in your life? You've given them the chance. You've given them the chance. How is your children? What comes out of their mouth? What language do they come out of their mouth? Because You've given them your DVDs to watch of the Hollywood star who is an adulteress, who is an adulterer, who has half five wives, changing wives every two years. But he's a celebrity. He's one you, hey, 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 hey. He's an adulterer, my friend. He's a demonic person. Oh, hey, 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 hey. The Hollywood, no. We must say, no, you are a sinner, repent. I mean, we don't get to judge people yet, but true. But the truth is the truth. It's the truth. Why has it become that the Christians, the celebrities, come to their church who is five times married in living and adultery? We give them a seat in the altar and put them a gold issue. Why? We should tell them to repent. We are scared. Because if we tell them to repent, he will take his money away. And this is why we must come back to that basic thing and let people understand that today is a day of decision. We cannot afford to allow the devil to operate in our lives. Can I say that again? We cannot afford to allow the devil to operate in our marriage. We cannot afford to allow the devil to operate in our family. We cannot afford to give the devil room in our children. We cannot afford to allow the devil to play around in our homes. It is time to make a declaration. Two things I'm going to tell you before we begin to take up praying. Two things that are very vital for every believer. Every believer. You must have your own personal relationship. Relationships are very important. Now, I'm coming now. Relationships are very important. If you notice, I don't emphasize too much on the demonic because I don't, I don't want, I just give it a, 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 a caricature example because I, I don't want to glorify too much in 
But relationships are very important. The relationships you keep and you maintain are what is most important. Now, you can have a relationship either with God, whereby there will be peace, joy, and strength, everything. You have all of them. And this relationship you can keep. How do you get that relationship stronger? By the word of God. Bible study. Word of God. Bible study. Prayer. Those two things. Intercession. Devotion. Worship. Worship. Intercession. Intercession. Walking with God. Evangelism. Evangelism. Spiritual activities. You are relationship. You strengthen it by the word of God, by your prayer life. Now, I would explain this because sometimes you don't think the word of God is just you go to you go to the Bible. Pastor said, read the word of God. No. No. I'm talking about letting the word be part of you. Have you ever? Sat down and you are so in tune with the word you forget everything else. It's like you are lost. When the word is inside of you, no demon, no devil, no spirit can touch your life. Because it's scared so much of the man that knows the word of God. Can I come a bit, uh, a bit stronger? I am convinced that all these past people who always get delivered, praise them. It's lacking. It's lacking. This is lacking. You say, what do you mean, Pastor? Let me go a bit deeper. You know, when something is consuming you, when something is strong on the inside of you, all you think about is that thing. Yeah? Just imagine the word of God to be that special thing in your life you can't live without. Just imagine that everything God says you are doing it. Are you hearing me now? Just imagine that every thought, every action of the world you are following will be a different story. Our Christian life will be very different. Just imagine that we come to Bible study and everything we are taught, we put into practice. Our lives will be different. Just imagine that even when you sit down and you are writing down and the preacher is speaking and say, make peace to enemies, and you are able to make peace and say, forgive me. Just imagine what may happen in the house of God. But the word will come, the word will come, the word will come, the word will come. Our heart is to end. We go home, we forget. We pass that and we forget. This is why I'm saying God is looking for a contract heart. A heart that God can deal with. A heart that God can shake. A heart that God can deliver. A heart that God can save. So, you know, but Pastor, when he don't, she did, he, he did. Yeah, it doesn't matter what he did, what she did. What is God telling you to do? God will not hold you responsible for her action, for his action, or for your own reaction. Because when the word is upon your life, all you want to do is to say, I will not give place to the devil. I will not give place. I want to see in our church, forget about that church for a while now. I want to see in our church, men and women of God here, able to lift up their hands. And as they lift up their hands, the demons in the street of humanity we know that the child of God has come. As you go to the grocery shop, the power of God will be so, because you are actually having the word on the inside. The word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Forget about all the demons. You don't have to worry about them because the word is on the inside. Forget about the curses. You don't have to worry about them because the word is on the inside. Forget about the demons that are attacking you. You don't have to worry because the word I keep saying Christianity is the simplest. It is so easy. So simple. But we make it so complicated. Get the word in. Follow what the 
man, you say, follow it. Take your flesh as a flesh, you sit down there. Go, flesh, let my spirit follow God. Follow by prayer. Prayer. Look, prayer is not just talking. Prayer is a relationship you form. You know, when, 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 when you are talking to somebody and you feel that the person does not understand what you are saying, and you, you, you need to repeat yourself. Some people Christians are like that. Your prayer life can be so dynamic, can be so divine, because you have to be stereotype. You know stereotype? Every morning. Oh God, I thank you for God. Amen. Every morning. Oh God, the people. It's stereotype. Oh, I'm going to be praying. No! You miss the point. You miss the point. It's not that. It's a relationship. Whereby you don't have to come and say, oh, uh, uh, let me look at the book to pray. Uh, 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 uh. No! It's a relationship. When you wake up, Father, I'm here. God, today is our another day. And you, it is spontaneous. You don't have two minutes. You don't have to watch. The pastor will say, pray for five hours. Oh, only two minutes. No, you don't have to watch. It becomes a lifestyle that you enjoy so much. You don't even want to stop. You go in there. Father is speaking to you. You are talking to him. You are lifting up your hands. You are exalting him. You are crying to him. Your heart is melted with his love. You don't even know. You 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 pray. And you don't have a you don't have a timetable. You don't have a, you just begin to you, you and your heart is so full because your prayer is no longer stereotype. It's no longer memorized. It's no longer about you. It's now completely different because God has enabled you. Because God has consumed you. You no longer yourself. You don't even know when you stop. Because you are so full of that prayer time. When you come out, oh, how many hours was I? Two hours, I didn't even know. You enjoy it so much, you can't wait for the next day. Even when you are doing your activities, you, do you know the, please look at me now. Do you know the thing that is sad about Christianity, about Christians? They are doing their activities and they forgot the prayer you prayed in the morning. You are in your wedding prayer. You forgot you even prayed in the morning. You forgot the Bible you read before you left. That is terrible. Because the prayer you prayed in the morning, the Bible you read in the morning, should be the one that will lead you all day long. Should be the one that will guide you all day long. When you go to work in the morning and your supervisor says to you, this is the role of what we have to do. You have a guide. Fix the light, fix this, fix that. You have a guide. You don't deviate. Before you, before 4 o'clock, you fix it. You have a guide. You follow through. My brother, my sister, the thing that you go every day of your life that should lead you is you already have spent time with God so much. God has spoken to you so much in that direction. So that when you are doing your lunch break, He is still with you. When you are having your, 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 your computer set, He is still with you. Every when the man comes and speak and look to you, it doesn't matter because you are so full of God. You know what to respond. You don't have to look for the script. You know how they do it to the end. If you call your Ambella Victoria, wait, wait. You, 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 it's a script. They are reading a script to you. They don't know what they are. They are not interested in your life. They have the script they are reading. It's a script. That's why they ask you the question two times. And sometimes you give them the same answer. They ask you that same question. It's a script. You don't have to read the script because you know that you are so soaked in that time of prayer. A few years ago. I like to say this because I want to encourage you all. Because prayer and the word are the two things that can get that devil and those demons and those bushcraft off your house. Yeah. Two years, a few years ago, a few years ago, I was managing a company. And I remember that day, I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning to pray. I said, always every morning, pray, 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 pray. As I was about to leave, the Lord said, wait, son. He said, son, be careful today. Because uh, your boss is going to come and attack you and say some nasty things against you. Be careful today, son. Be careful. Just, you know, let it pass. And I was so released. Oh, hallelujah. And I remember going to work that morning. And exactly as the Lord said, my boss, an old man of some, he's three years old or so, he, figured, he came and he grabbed my chest like this. And he went, oh my God. And I was like, okay, Lord, thank you, Lord. And imagine, you respond like a little bit. I mean, I'm a young man. I could easily, you know. I just didn't let it go let it be. Does it take, did it take long? The man made a cup of tea. Hey, do you want a cup of tea? This reminder, if you want to, that's the boss about to kill me, strike me. What changed? Because if I have responded, I would have boom, boom, and the man would drop 
prophet that will be a prisoner. Yeah? But you see, but the thing, because God has told me in my time of prayer, I know how to respond. It was so easy for me. Until I left that cup. Before when the man was on his dying bed, I, I was the only one around in his room. And I looked at him and I spoke to him and I said, Sam, it's time to repent and turn to God again. I lifted, I prayed for him, the only person that was allowed in that room. You know, friends, because if I was that person that does not, you know, God does lead us, people of God. That's why I'm not going to emphasize on this. Let's leave the demons alone for now. Because let's leave them. all of those ones, they don't have any power over your life. You know, this spirit, that demon, the idea is true, but you don't have power over your life. Because when you are so soaked in prayer, the word, prayer, the word, prayer, the word, you are a different person. You are a different person. You know, there are circumstances that will come you across your way as a believer that you don't expect to come. Sometimes you wake up and your husband, you don't know where it comes from. You just don't know where it comes from. How oh, did this man speak to me like this? Or your wife, you don't know. But if you have this too, your life will be so easy. Because the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. But if the man is telling you, why did you put that girl today? And you are telling you, you don't have eyes to see, probably will start. You start fighting, and before you know it, I'm divorcing. Oh, bye bye, bye bye. But you see, you just defeated the whole purpose for the day. Because God does not want us to have that. Then you go to a deeper level, deeper intercession. Deeper intercession. You begin to intercede. You begin to call upon the Father. Because now your relationship is getting deeper. You know when you have a child that it's a child like Zoe, it's a baby, or, or, or and Zoe is growing, and Zoe is growing. Zoe is a two years or three years, and Zoe is growing, 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 growing. And then your relationship with Zoe changes. Because you don't know how to carry it away every day. So we start walking, then we start talking, we start eating by herself, and everything changes. The same thing with you. The moment you begin to understand what this is, your intercession, you begin to go a bit deeper and deeper. Instead of just praying for 20 minutes and say, I've done my duty, you enjoy talking to God. Any spare hour, any spare minute, you are trying to lie down, but so many times you get out of your bed, you are crying to God, you are interceding for your church. Because you know what, friend? Your heart. I become melted and broken by God so much so that the people that see me, they will say, This man has spent time with God. Oh, this man, hallelujah, has spent that time with God. And that's what God is calling us to do. That you go further and worship. People say, I worship. What is worship? It's not just lifting up hands here. In your most quiet time, have you ever seen worship when you can't stop your cries? Your heart is so. This is, this is what the devil fears most. I'm telling you, all of if we do these things, yeah, the demons will run, will run, will run. Because they know you know who you are. Because you are, you, your, your worship will be so divine. You worshiping God, you're not looking at, is he praising God? How come the microphone is not working? What come? You're not interested in those things. Because your heart is connected to the King of Kings. Your mind is focused, then you begin to receive from the Lord and you come to walking with God. And all I feel is that evangelism is easier. Because when you have all this, you don't struggle to evangelize. Oh, after the evangelism, oh, they come. No. You become an evangelist every day. Everyone you meet, you talk to. Because your heart is so overwhelmed. This is where God wants to take the church. I'm telling you, if the church in Australia, if the church in Melbourne, if the church in Melbourne can arise and begin to follow this thing, we're going to see people flock to Christ like never before. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I say it again, that it's good to go to a you know, big platform and do if I can do. Hey, give your life to Jesus. It's good. That's good. Yeah. But the best evangelism is one to one. The one in your office, they observe your character, they observe your behavior. During break time, you are not gossiping. You're not talking about the women and the men and the people you slept with. You're not talking about all the bad things. No, 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 no. You are talking. Even, even, even when you come into the room, they respect you. Nobody can see God in you. Because I've seen that many times. They just, they, 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 they don't know how to put, put it into words. But they respect you. They see they are talking. Oh, don't speak those things into here. Because this person is coming here. Then you begin to find. When their problem comes, they will come and knock at your door. They will say, can I talk to you?
Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? Can you mentor me? And I'll give you opportunity to talk about the goodness of the Lord in your life. And before you know it, can I come to the church? Because they are seeing you, they are admiring you. But if you are like a wolf in the, in the office, you are like a wolf, you are like a tiger. And it's going to you, fight for your right. Ah, that boss, I will kill you. Uh -huh. Then they will ask, you, which church did you go to? I don't want to go to that church. Because friends, the reality is that all of this we're talking about today, when I look at the demonic, I look at it from a different atmosphere today. That is why I don't scare. That is why, you know, you give me the microphone, I preach. I, I, you know, many pastors ask me this question. How come you're not scared? You know, and, and I can tell you right now, I can tell you right now, if I'm standing here and I'm preaching the word of God and there's a demon in the back, the demon will manifest. Because he knows that this man has come with authority. I'm not just there to, to, to furnish the floor. No, I have come with authority and the power of the Holy Spirit. We must all have that mantle to break the yoke of the enemy over our family, over our children. The time is now. The time is now. You have the opportunity. You have the opportunity to life. You have the opportunity to shine. You have the opportunity to rise up. You have the opportunity to say, God, I will live pure, I will live right. Friend, the, all the operations of the demonic that I have spoken to you about today, I put it in one word. A man that knows his authority will never be afraid of demons. A man that knows the God he said will never be. I mean, look, one testimony I, I, I keep saying, sharing is that, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, as a human being, you don't even feel like preaching. Don't feel like preaching. Don't feel like praying for anybody. Yeah, we are humans. You want to just sit down? I sit down. <laughs> I remember there was this day and we were coming to church and I was preaching that day and I didn't feel like preaching at all. I really felt, no, maybe I should just not preach. But I have to go because I had the pastor. <laughs> I was 41. So I went to the, to the car and went there to church. I didn't feel like preaching because I didn't feel like, I don't know why. Maybe I was tired, maybe I was, I don't know. But I went to the pulpit and I just preached. Speaking of God moves mightily. Unknown to me was a 35 year old lady that was in that church. I think if the lady can remember, she was this tall. 35 year old girl. Mine. That was the day. Praying for people. This girl was so possessed. She was so possessed. She turned the chain upside down. Four hefty men that we had could not hold her. She would go here, go here, go half an hour praying, sweating. More than 40 minutes, 40 for time, we pray for this lady. And then God delivered her. <laughs> you know, some people think that demons are not in, in the uh, in Western world. They are demons. They are telling you. They are big. The lady said to me, after deliverance, can I talk to you, please? Uh, can I come with you? Don't, don't leave me because they are outside here. They want to destroy. So let's go outside. I said, uh, we're going to go to your house. Now <coughs> wait. She said, this is the most intriguing part of the story. This, look, I'm not the person that judge people. Please don't get me wrong. I'm just going to say this for the sake of saying it. Yeah? I don't judge anybody. But she wasn't a beautiful woman. She was not beautiful at all. She said, Pastor William, I have destroyed more than 36 marriages. She said, all I do, I walk and I look at the man, the man leave his wife for me. She said, I mean, look, this is not like, it's not like she's, uh, you know what I mean, yeah? But anyway, let's not go there. So, the spirit in her was deep. It was a demonic one. She said, I read so many, I mean, she read so many marriages. God delivered her. And then when she took us to her house, that is when action started. As soon as we stepped in her house, <laughs> the power went up. <laughs> Electricity went up. And I said, yeah, devil, we are here. In the name of Jesus, I command that power to come back. Power came back. Presently, I saw that in my eyes. It wasn't like nobody told me. I would took all her because she committed abortion with, with yoga. She did, she did. How she did it, don't tell me. She used yoga to do the abortion. Through the money. Yeah? We got all her yoga books, everything. Her. Massive thing she got. And we destroyed all of them. Burnt all of them. She was set free by God's grace. Very young man, very free. 
She's not serving God. I, I mean, I see some of them going back. And she was serving God, doing all for God. And I realized one thing that day. This is not a joke. It's a lifestyle. It's who you are. If in my tiredness, in my, I don't want to preach, God could do that. Just think about it for a while now. It's not because, it's because of the lifestyle you've lived all that time. It's because of how you've owned God, how you've respected God, how you've lifted up your heart. And God used you to do that. People of God, God is no respecter of persons. She said this to me. She said, Pastor scared for me. He said, every church I went to is scared for me. He said, you are the only one that ever scared for me. I don't scare for them anyway. Yeah? And she said, this, this, this was a, a massive victory. People of God, I'm going to tell you again and again and again. God is bigger than any issue, any demon, any sickness, anything. Get yourself into these things. Amen. Never be afraid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, before we begin to close, I, I want to bring this to the to, to conclusion today. When we get into a moment of asking God for deliverance, you've got to remember this morning that uh, there's a ceiling that God has created. There's that atmosphere that God has created. Bible says, um, how can a young man make his way pure? The word, by giving you to your word, the word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. The Bible says, uh, you know, in the book of Psalm 1, 2, I said, I will lift up my eyes to the east from where cometh my head, my head coming from the Lord God Almighty. Now, friend, when you are a person that is entwined and you are connected and you are so dedicated, I want to give you one, one uh, assignment today. When you go back home, clear your table, clear your floor, and dig deep like your, like your, uh, what is your, uh, claws? Yeah, claws. Dig deep into the world and get it deeper and deeper and deeper and let go. Because the Bible says, He that has escaped out of the remnant of Israel shall again uh, dig uh, dig the roots downwards and bear fruit upwards. Let it be deep. Let it be deep. Even your husband, even your children, things will begin to fall in place. When you go to your office on Monday, there will be a difference. And they will see that this man that we are talking about here really has got what it takes to bring down the glory of God. Amen. People of God, today I don't want to stay long. I have spoken to you about demonic operation. I recall before we pray. Demons have no authority over a child of God. Yes, they can oppress you, but you have to be careful not to let the oppression become a possession. But uh, today's world. We have uh, become so complacent. We've got to go back to what the Bible says. Behold, I give you power and authority. Simple. There is no punishment. You can't punish it more than that. Power and authority. Power is power and authority is authority. If God said to Lily, if God said to uh, this brother there, I give you power and authority, it's what he said. He didn't say, he, he didn't say, oh, let me go and write 50 books. No, he said, no 50 books. I give you what? Power and what? Authority. It's given to you. So right now, when the demonic are attacking you, when you find out that you're alive, you can repent today, you can let the abuse come out. Get it out and let God Almighty share this life. So that when you are out of here today, you can begin to bounce and say, you know what, I know my authority. I know who I am in Christ. I know who I am. I'm not going to, I'm not going to let you uh, 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 play football with me or soccer with me. And you can begin to see that God will honor you. Because it's true, people of God, God does honor us. Amen. It's true. God does honor. He honors his word. And he honors his word. It's very, very true. God will not lie. Can I say that again? God will not lie. He is not going to lie. No matter what God says, in the name of Jesus, every demon was bad. That is the word of God. He's not going to lie. He's not going to say, the demons are too heavy. I changed my mind. <laughs> That's not good. It's not going to lie. And if it's not going to lie, then you have, you have the assurance. Because you can walk out of here today and say, you know what? I'm reclaiming my authority. I'm reclaiming my stand. I'm coming out of everything the enemy prepared for us. Because me, even me, even me, even me, I'm going to deepen my relationship. 
Okay, I didn't tell you that one, but I think you can believe me. Yeah? So the relationships, deep in your relationships, make it stronger, make it powerful, yeah. make it intense, make it really look, make make it really, really, really intense. I beg you, make it intense. Um, when we started the church in Malta, it was myself and my brother Fred. He's not here today, and you know what? We had a, we used to have a, a church meeting where we about nine or ten people in the house prayer meeting. It was good; people were happy. But when we started the church, it was different because then every Wednesday we used to travel from our town in Zaytun to Mostar. Let me explain that. That's about uh, maybe from uh, here to Kilo, maybe like that. Every Wednesday it was only two of us. We would open the church door and we would pray together. Two hours we go back home. Me and Fred. Every Wednesday for the last for two years or so, I can't remember exactly now. We did that for two years or so. Fred, you can ask him. We we can stay in our home, but we went there, drove the car, went there every and there were just two of us. And then slowly God began to do something. And that today the church is a different story. But you know, when I look at all those days, we could say, what's the point? Nobody is coming. That is why I don't understand Christianity today. I don't understand it. We give up quickly. We look at the numbers. Oh, how many people are in church? Oh, I don't think I'll <laughs> if, if we came here today with one person, I would do the preaching. I don't care how many comes. Because for me, God has spoken and God will be glorified. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's be honest. Let's be faithful. Let's stand up here tonight. You can lift up your hands and lift up your voice. And you can pray. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Some of us need to repent. Some of us need to make commitment. Some of us need to make a decision. Some of us need to make a reconnection. Some of us need to make a firm confirmation. I say, God, today I draw the line. Sometimes we want to pray for people, but I believe sometimes the most important prayer is the one you can pray for yourself. You may decide right now that you want to go to the altar of God and lay at the altar and say, God, today I am making a commitment. I am making a decision. Lord, today I am making it clear, 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 clear that, oh God, I am not going to follow any other way but you. Oh God, I have made it very clear that you are my all and all. So go ahead and pray. Open your mind, everybody. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Don't let anybody stop you right now. You may want to come out of your seat. You may want to make a different noise. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Go ahead and speak it out. Speak it out tonight. Speak it out. Declare. 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 Speak to the power of the enemy. Declare and say, me, even me. I am more than a conqueror. Declare and say, even me. There is something about me that is different. The Holy Ghost upon my life. I will dedicate my whole spirit, my whole life unto the kingdom of the living God. Go ahead. 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 Don't let anybody look at you. Doesn't matter who knows you there. Doesn't matter who is looking at you. What matters is what God thinks about you. Go ahead right now and speak it out. Go ahead, everyone. Everyone, go ahead. Rava Shanda, Kerebo Soto Morima, Liba Shakata, Retebo Sanda, Mama Lende. You want to kneel down? You want to stand up? You want to go on your knees in the altar? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. There is a room for people to receive from the dead. Hallelujah. There is a room for God to minister. There is a room for God to show for this power. The demon power has been exposed. But there is power, there is authority, there is an anointing tonight to break every yoke of the enemy. Because the Bible says, greater is he on the inside of me than the devil in the world. Go ahead, everybody. Go ahead. 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 Go ah